Hi, this is Rich Pfeiffer, Chief Medical Officer of Genesis Healthcare. The COVID vaccines are coming, and we expect the first vaccines to be delivered and administered this week. Delaware looks to be the first state to receive the vaccine within our portfolio via the state-driven process, while CVS is scheduled to be undertaking their clinics as early as next week for most other states. There is so much information to share, and we appreciate the many questions that we've received. We're doing our best to answer them as quickly as we can. So let's start with what we know. This vaccine, the first vaccine, is an mRNA vaccine. Uh, there is no virus in this vaccine. It's just made of mRNA. No live virus, no weakened virus, no inactivated virus. You can't catch COVID from this vaccine because there's no virus in it. So how does it work? Well, the vaccine uses a code to teach our body how to make one harmless protein, the spike protein, which triggers an immune response to produce antibodies against that protein. And that's the protein that's on the outside of the virus. And so it teaches our body how to attack the virus. That's how we defend ourselves against coronavirus. And so while this mRNA vaccine may seem new, it's been studied for many years, decades, and the original SARS virus in the early 2000s and the MERS, the MERS virus vaccines in 2012 were also tied to mRNA vaccine research at the time. And so you are among the first to be able to receive this Pfizer vaccine, the mRNA vaccine. And although you're the first, approximately 44,000 people were in the trials that led to its authorization by the FDA. 44,000 people came before you. And there are over 30,000 more who were in the trial for the Moderna vaccine, which is a similar vaccine likely to be approved as, as early as the end of this week. These trial participants included a cross-section of gender, age, ethnicity, and health status. And the results of their participation has shown a 95% protection rate, 95% effectiveness rate in people age 16 and older. This is incredibly encouraging. So many of you have expressed some concerns about side effects of the vaccine and the side effects you hear about headache, mild fever, fatigue, muscle aches, they typically last 24 to 36 hours if they're gonna occur at all. And they're actually a sign that your body's mounting an immune response to the vaccine, essentially doing what it should do to develop immunity. And so although these side effects may be uncomfortable for a short period of time, we can get through them. We can deal with the symptoms by taking medicines like like Tylenol or Advil or Naproxen for treatment of post-vaccination symptoms. And then those symptoms will wear off in 24 to 36 hours. And it's important to weigh the short-term risk of those transient side effects against the potentially much more serious and potentially deadly impacts of COVID. So let's talk about who should get the vaccine. We've been receiving a lot of questions about who should get the vaccine. And here are some of the recommendations that come from CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. These recommendations are rooted in evidence from these robust clinical trials that I just told you about. First of all, people who have compromised immune systems or are pregnant or are breastfeeding, they are all eligible to receive the vaccine. People with a history of allergic reactions unrelated to vaccines or injectables are also eligible to receive the vaccine. And even people with a history of severe allergic reactions to other vaccines or injectables, they may receive this vaccine as well after speaking with their physician. The vaccine also can be offered to people regardless of their history of prior COVID infection or COVID antibody status. We may need to delay administration until, until after the acute illness is over. And we may need to delay it a little bit for people who receive the monoclonal antibody treatment, but there's no need to delay vaccination after COVID exposures. So what's the bottom line? The only people who we know should not receive this vaccine are those with a known allergy to the COVID vaccine itself. And since this vaccine is a new vaccine, that will not include a lot of people. For the rest of us, and that's nearly all of us, let's roll up our sleeves and let's get protected. That was a lot of information. However, we know there's not a one size fits all approach to building vaccine confidence. Hi, my name is LaShawn Bathia and I'm Vice President of Legislative Affairs and Reimbursement. I am also Chair of the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee. We know that some of you have concerns and we have been participating in many listening sessions with our staff to understand where some of those hesitancies lie. In healthcare, we recognize that the people disproportionately affected by COVID are the black and brown communities. 
many of whom have been prioritized to receive this vaccine. While we believe the way out of this pandemic is a high rate of vaccination, we acknowledge the complicated and unjust treatment that our minority communities have historically had with healthcare. We believe that we need to create dialogue around these challenges and that we need to listen. We have engaged our Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee to share their thoughts and perspectives, to make recommendations to help us build trust and to ensure that we provide information that resonates. We also plan to lead through example. The decision to get the vaccine is a very personal one. As a nurse, I believe in the science behind the vaccine. So I always knew that I would get the vaccine eventually. However, over the last few days, my decision related to when I would get the vaccine has evolved. As an African-American woman, it was important for me to research the number of minorities that were in the test groups. It was important to research any effects reported by minority participants. It was also important for me to hear from minorities that chose to be a participant in the test group and the reasons why. Knowing that Dr. Kismika Colbert, an African-American immunologist, was one of the scientists involved in creating one of the vaccines was also helpful. As I stated earlier, I initially had no sense of urgency when it came to getting the vaccine. But after doing some soul searching, I realized that many of my friends and family members who looked at my decision to delay as a reason for pause in their own decision, possibly thinking, well, if LaShawn is going to wait to get the vaccine, then I'll wait also. Then I realized that I have a sense of personal responsibility, knowing that I was not afraid, knowing I had worked through all my personal hesitancies, that I trust and understand the science. I feel comfortable with the minority representation in the test groups and the development of the vaccine and understanding my role in my family, in my community and among my peers, I have decided to get the vaccine as soon as it is available to me. Many of you, just like I, have had a series of questions to go through that journey to get to acceptance and that is okay. Our goal is to guide you through that and answer any questions you may have to get you closer to accepting the vaccine.